Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Before starting with this video, I would like to thank all the viewers for the 100 views on the YOLO 2D object detection video. Okay, so let's start with this video. In this video, we are going to discuss the problem of camera to bird's eye view. We are going to use UNET XST network to solve this problem. So let's get started. So let us start with the problem definition. In this problem, given a set of images taken from the different cameras present on a self-driving car or a robot, we are required to process these images and output a bird's eye view of the given environment. Bird's eye view or top view are viewing the 3D scenes from the top. As an input, we can either have a single image or we can have multiple different images taken from the different cameras. In this case, we can see this is our self-driving car and in this case, for our particular problem, we have four cameras in the front, left, right and the back. Given these four images, we are required to process them and output the bird's eye view of the environment around the car. As we can see over here, the red rectangle is the ego car or our self-driving car and the other blue rectangles are the other cars. Now, why do we require to calculate this bird's eye view of the environment? There are mainly two reasons we would like to calculate the bird's eye view. The first application is object detection. Calculating a bird's eye view of the given environment provides us with a different way of doing object detection compared to other different computer vision methods. The second or the more important application is path planning. This bird's eye view provides us with a concise representation of the surrounding environment, the different cars and objects that are present in the scene and the road that we are required to go on. Using this concise representation, we can easily implement path planning algorithms on our self-driving car. So this is the complete introduction to the problem statement. Now let us have a look at the data set that we are going to work with in this project. All right, so the link to this data and this data visualization notebook would be provided in the description box below. Just like in the problem description, we are given four images, the front, the rear, left and right. Along with that, we are given certain birds eye view images. Now the images that we have been given are not exactly real time images, but semantic segmented images. We already have the different classes in these images semantically segmented and we have to derive a bird's eye view image for the same. The cool thing about this data set is that the data set is derived from a simulation. The self-driving car drives around the simulation environment and we capture the different images from the four different cameras that are present on the self-driving car. A drone flies just above a self-driving car in order to capture the ground truth bird's eye view images. As we can see, we have these four images taken from the self-driving car cameras, the front image, the rear image, the left image and the right image. And this is the ground truth bird's eye view image of the 3D environment. This next image, the bird's eye view occlusion image contains occlusion as a separate class. This means that the scene that is hidden or occluded by different objects in the environment are represented using a separate class. As we can see in this gray color over here. This car present behind a self-driving car is blocking the view of the camera in this gray space. Additionally, some buildings are also occluding the space as we can see over here. And due to this occlusion, we are not able to see this car that is present behind the building and is not visible through our camera. This homography image is similar to the bird's eye view image that we have over here, but contains a lot of noise. So what is a homography operation? In simple terms, using a homography operation, we can convert from one image plane to another image plane. In this particular case, we are converting from these four images, the front, rear, left and right, and using these to generate a bird's eye view image. 
this bird's eye view conversion operation is also called inverse perspective mapping. More on this homography and inverse perspective mapping will be discussed in the later part of the video and we will understand why we do not use this technique directly to derive the bird's eye view image. Now let us have a look at few instances of this data set. All right, so the technique that we are going to apply to solve this problem is unit XST. As the name suggests, this technique is an extension of the unit semantic segmentation architecture. Therefore, the unit XST has two components, the unit architecture itself and its extension. Let us discuss the two components one by one. So the first component is the unit network. UNET is a network that is used for semantic segmentation. I have discussed the problem of semantic segmentation and the different techniques to solve them. The link to that could be found in the I button above. In the problem of semantic segmentation, we are required to segment a region of interest from a given image. For instance, in an image captured by a self-driving car, we are required to segment the cars that are present in the image and the road that is present in the image. We can do so by highlighting them with different colors. The unit architecture is similar to other semantic segmentation architectures where we have an encoder part of the network and we have the decoder part of the network. The encoder part downsamples the image, deriving different visual features in the image and then we have the decoder part which upsamples the image and returns us the output. Apart from the information derived from the decoder part itself, the decoder uses information from the encoder part using skip connections as we can see over here. Initially, unit architecture was devised for biomedical image segmentation. However, its use cases applies to other domains as well. For instance, in our case, self-driving cars. UNET forms the basic architecture for this technique. Now let us discuss the XST or the extension part of the UNET network. The extension part of the technique is that we make use of what are called spatial transformers. So before discussing what are spatial transformers, let us discuss the concept of homography. For instance, we have an object and we take its image from a camera that is placed over here. We change the camera position as well as its orientation to something over here and we take the image again. The transformation between these two images is what is called homography. In mathematical terms, homography is a simple matrix multiplication. A cool application of homography is that if we know the homography matrix that converts from one image plane to other image plane, then from a single image, we can directly compute how that object would look like in a separate image plane without even taking a different picture. However, in application, we would require those image planes to be close to each other. In general, the transformation need not be that complex. They can be as simple as translating the camera plane or even rotating the camera plane at a given fixed point. For instance, given this image, we are rotating the image plane by approximately 15 degrees. Now theoretically it would seem that we can simply take an image X, multiply it by a homography matrix H and get the final resulting image HX. However, it is not that simple. In simple terms, homography is a simple transformation that maps pixels from one image to another image. Hence what we would have is this image pixel mapped to some image pixel in this image over here. On doing this matrix multiplication, it is easy to observe that the output hx is not going to output integer values. What this means 
is that a given pixel over here is going to map to a number of different pixels over here. Hence, in order to apply this transformation, we are going to have a lot of different average calculations, making the final image look not really good. Hence, a solution to this is to do an inverse homography calculation. What that means, instead of computing a transformation that goes from input to output, we instead calculate a transformation that goes from the output pixel to the input pixels. For instance, this output pixel over here is going to map to the input image in a rotated fashion, something like this over here. We calculate an average of the surrounding pixels in the input image. For instance, this pixel is going to map to surrounding these four pixels over here. Hence, we are going to calculate their weighted average pixel values to derive the value of this pixel. This weighted average is calculated using a technique called bilinear interpolation. The weighted average is taken with respect to the distance from the surrounding pixels. In place of bilinear interpolation, we can apply other different techniques like linear interpolation or nearest neighbors as well. However, for spatial transformers, bilinear interpolation is the choice due to its differentiable nature. So, having understood this complete process of homography, let us discuss the use of this homography in a spatial transformer. Spatial transformer is an extension module that can be applied to any convolution network. This enables the convolution network to also learn the different spatial properties that are present in the dataset. The spatial transformer learns the different parameters of the homography matrix in order to aid the convolution network. In the same example, if we have an object over here and we take its image from this point and let us assume for some reason the CNN architecture is not able to classify this object accurately. How spatial transformers are going to help? The spatial transformers are going to learn the homography matrix parameters in such a way that they present an image to the CNN from a different point so that the CNN is able to classify that object more accurately. So having understood what is a spatial transformer and how it helps, let us see how we apply this to our unit XST technique. For the unit XST technique, we are not going to learn the parameters of the homography matrix. Instead, we are going to provide the spatial transformers with a fixed homography matrix. So where do we get these homography parameters? Since homography is a general application, we can also apply this to our self-driving car scenario as well. For instance, given this image from a right-facing camera, we can easily derive a homography that maps from this right camera to a virtual camera that is present at the top. We can do this for all the four cameras and derive a top view of the environment. In this way, we would easily get the homography parameters. This technique of deriving the top view from these given images is also called inverse perspective mapping. But there's a natural question to ask, why we apply complex network architectures like unit XST, whereas we can solve our problem using simple homographies? The answer to this is, the top view homography or inverse perspective mapping makes an assumption that the world around these cameras is flat. We can easily observe that this assumption does not hold true in any case whatsoever. The cars, the trucks, pedestrians and the different monuments, they have considerable height in order for the inverse perspective mapping to work. Although we can get a top view of the environment by applying an inverse perspective mapping, however, the results that we get from that technique are not really accurate and useful for our task. Hence, we need such complex architectures like unit XST. Alright, so the two components of unit XST are now discussed. Now, let us see how these two components combine to give the final architecture. For this network, we are going to have four inputs 
for the four different images that we have as we can see over here we are going to have a similar encoder network for each of these four images as can be seen from the red lines for the decoder we again have a similar architecture however there is a single pipeline that gives us the final output the skip connections over here are what makes use of spatial transformers the four feature maps at different levels are combined using spatial transformers each feature is first passed through a spatial transformer and then these different features are combined this combination is then fed through the skip connection and this is done similarly for each level of the architecture all right so this is it for the technical discussion of unit xst now let us have a brief look at the implementation and the results that we get from training this network all right so the link to this implementation notebook would be provided in the description box below in the first section we have implemented the different utility functions like load image and one hot conversion of the input image in simple terms what one hot encoding means given a semantic segmented input that has various different colors we convert that rgb image into a 3d matrix that contains a sparse representation of the different classes this representation is helpful for the machine learning model to learn and understand the data in the next section we have the different configuration parameters one thing to note is that there are certain changes that have been applied to these parameters in order to obey the constraints that are provided by us on kaggle the image shape has been reduced in order to get a faster learning curve the batch size has also been increased in order to get the same results also the algorithm is only trained for a total of 40 epochs whereas we would have required to train for 100 epochs in this next section we have the different data loader functions that load the data for our machine learning model in this next section we define the different network architecture first we define the spatial transformer next we implement unet along with the spatial transformer extension and finally we train the network now let us have a look at the final output predictions just like before we have images from the four cameras on the self driving car the front rear left and right this next image is the output prediction generated by our model and the next image is the ground truth birds eye view image as we can see the model has learnt to some extent to represent the birds eye view image however there is some slight noise that is present in the output let us have a look at other images as well overall we can say the model has learnt a representation of birds eye view image but it would require more training to convert to more better results all right so this is all that we had to discuss for this unit xst technique if you like the video please press the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos and thank you for watching bye